So we are talking 20 frames per second, even in mechanical shutter, basically unlimited shooting, even in RAW plus JPEG, and 5.5K RAW internal video straight to the camera. I mean, All right, so I was able to get kind of an early preview of this camera a couple weeks ago, been able to look over the specs, compare it to everything. I did have some chances to talk to Canon about some of the features and things that they're gonna be putting on this camera. So I have a lot of information here for you guys, but I'm very curious to hear some of your thoughts below. I'll give you mine towards the end of the video, but feel free to hit me up in the comments there. Let me know what you think of the camera so far. Um, but first, it, probably the most contentious aspect of this camera is going to be the sensor, and that's because it is 20 megapixels, which is the same resolution as the 1DX2. And I know a lot of us were hoping for a little bit of a bump when it came to that. Uh, however, this is a brand new sensor itself. It's newly designed and it does have a new low pass filter on it. Now, at first I was kind of surprised to hear Canon talk about this low pass filter. We've seen them going away in most cameras because as you increase the resolution, the low pass filter can decrease detail and those kind of work contrary to each other. But since we are left with a 20 megapixel camera, we don't really have to get rid of it here. So instead Canon chose to redesign it. Now, personally, I've had issues with Murray, and once you do, it's almost impossible to just get rid of. Now, 20 megapixels definitely seems a bit low for 2020. I was hoping for a little bit of a bump myself, um, but we should be able to expect much better images results because this is a brand new design on it. We are sticking with that same resolution, and so that means larger pixels on that sensor, and that's gonna mean better low light results. Now, Canon is saying about one stop at least, uh, depending on your ISO tolerances at a particular ISO, you might be okay with even a little bit more. And then we also should see a dynamic range increase. And Canon has redesigned their sensors a lot in the last couple of years, and they've been getting a lot better. It was previously kind of a weakness. It was dynamic range uh, with Canon, but it seems to be getting a lot better and we're getting really close to the competition with backside illuminated technology. So I don't quite think it'll be quite that, but we should get really good in image quality there. And the real justification, I think, for keeping that resolution low, we're gonna be talking about in just a second. Now it's amazing, but the 1DX2 is actually four years old right now, which is kind of an eternity in computer time. So the 1DX2 had two Digic 6 processors, and since then we've seen the Digic 7 and the Digic 8. Well, Canon has decided to skip both of those and the number nine for some reason. So we are going straight to 10. And this is the crazy powerful processor. In fact, they say it's over 300 times more powerful than the dual digit sixes uh, with computing time and over three times in the actual processing of your photo. So a much more powerful processor and we're gonna see the effects of that in a little bit, but that's gonna help with some image quality improvements as well, especially with JPEG. Now we are looking at 16 frames per second with a mechanical shutter when using the viewfinder. Now, if you bump that into live view, you will be able to get up to 20 frames per second and still mechanical shutter. And I know a lot of people love to shoot mechanical shutter because uh, especially if you're in these crappy gymnasiums and stuff like that, uh, you can get some flicker on lights and banding and stuff like that. So a mechanical shutter will basically eliminate all of those. Now we've seen the Sony A9 tackle 20 frames per second before. That was mechanical or actually electronic shutter only, which had the advantage of being able to shoot silently if you wanted to, but you can see banding occasionally in really crappy lighting. The Sony A9 was the best of the bunch because it uses a new technology for sensor that basically eliminated rolling shutter, uh, which if you use the 1DX Mark III in a silent mode, it'll be an electronic shutter for that. And you will most likely see a lot of the rolling shutter and banding issues that you can find on most other cameras. It's not uh, a very quick readout from that sensor. However, if you're shooting mechanical shutter, you don't have to worry about any of that. Now where the 1DX really shines is gonna be the buffer. So yes, while we did shoot 20 frames per second on the A9 for a couple years, and that was 24 megapixels, the 1DX Mark III can do it for a thousand frames in full 20 frames per second, shooting RAW plus JPEG. So while the 1DX Mark II topped out at just 170 frames, 
you can basically shoot unlimited now. So uh, I think the times of waiting for the camera are basically gone. So you can hold down the shutter button for 50 seconds in full 20 frames per second and never fill up the buffer. I don't think you are ever going to be waiting on this camera. And I know for a lot of photographers, that is going to be huge and that is a kind of a real area where some of the other cameras, especially like the A9, can fall behind is they're pretty good in that area, but you're definitely not going to be able to shoot unlimited. And there might be some situations where you might be waiting on the camera and the buffer to clear. So um, there's a brand new shutter mechanism and a brand new mirror mechanism on that that's helping to make that possible. And then also we should have lower blackout in that as well due to that new design. Um, Again, an advantage of the mirrorless cameras like the A9 in electronic shutter is that there's no blackout and that can be helpful. But if you wanna shoot mechanical shutter in that camera, you're still limited to 10 frames per second and you would not have the ability to do a lot of these things. So um, with this new mechanism, we can get much better mechanical shutter. And I think for a lot of sports photographers, uh, that will be something that's really beneficial. Although for wildlife, you might prefer the electronic shutter and the silent mode that you could get in something like an A9. Now that is also because we are rocking dual CF Express cards, which on the downside are brand new cards. And there's not a ton of options on the market, like three, I think. And then not a ton of reliability studies as well on this. However, these cards are just insanely fast, like 150 megabytes per second or more. And they're not crazy expensive. So uh, for 200 bucks, you can get a 128 gig card. That's basically the same price as UHS-2, which has been out for a while. So we are seeing amazing specs on these cards. Um, a lot of new cameras are adopting it and also the XQD cards that we had in like the Z series cameras and a couple of other cameras, those are being able to fit CF Express 2. So um, I think this is a new technology that's gonna take off. I'm glad to see it here. We're embracing a new format here and I think it's gonna pay off in the end. Now, another huge improvement area is gonna be the AF system. And this was always something that the 1DX was really good at, uh, but now we have 191 AF points with 155 cross type points. This is an upgrade from the 61 point system that was in the 1DX Mark II. However, the actual coverage of these points is basically the same. So um, whereas a lot of mirrorless cameras now, you can focus across the entire frame. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about that into this camera. Um, this, this is basically the same system as before, just with a different type of point, more of them. So you have greater density in these. Now, these are better AF points on here and the entire system is redesigned. So you will be able to have um, a better algorithms and processing with this and also better low light performance. And then one thing that's gonna be crazy awesome is that we now have AF support with F8 lenses across the entire frame. So if you're someone who loves to use teleconverters on your 100 to 400s or 5.6 lenses, you can now use those and you're no longer left with kind of limited AF performance on those. Now you can even go to F11 if you do want to with full AF support, although it won't be across the entire range, this is gonna be more like before where you only have access to a couple of points into the camera. Now the camera actually has a Digic 8 just for AF and AE. So that's actually the same processor that runs an entire EOS R. So this is going to be crazy fast with the autofocus system. And I think that it is going to be a huge improvement. I mean, you're talking more information coming to the focus sensor, more points, better tech, huge improvement of every way except for additional coverage. Now, thankfully, Canon is embracing Live View and they've always done a pretty good job with Live View with their cameras. And we need to because mirrorless technology has a lot of advantages and inside of the autofocus is going to be one of them. So throw this camera into Live View and now you get that extra coverage. So 90% of your horizontal AF coverage is going to be available and 100% vertical. So you can basically focus across the entire frame it will be divided into 525 detection segments. So you can pick from a variety of different points on there. Uh, you have more technology than is in an EOS R. It should be way faster than an EOS R2. Also, it's using luminance, colors, 
faces with eye detection, uh, head and depth of field data for AF tracking on here. That is again, way more information than the camera can access even in the regular viewfinder DSLR mode. So in live view, it just has a ton more information to be able to detect what object you're trying to shoot and where that object is going. Um, again, all of that uh, depth of field data and stuff like that is going to be a huge addition for focusing on that. So throw this into live view with a powerful algorithm with that DigiGate processor, and you possibly have a better focus system now in mirrorless mode than in the DSLR mode. So it's something I'm really gonna wanna check is that that autofocus system compared to like an EOS R, which is Canon's previous generation of live view autofocus. Um, I think this version is going to be a whole lot better and possibly the future of cameras going forward. Another big advantage to live view is that the camera can actually focus at the maximum aperture of the lens. So in Canon's case, 1.2, if you throw on like a 50 or 85 1.2, they've got some great lenses for that. You can get negative six EV on this camera, which is basically pure darkness. Now in the DSLR mode, it's negative four. So again, an advantage of going into live view on this camera is seen in this autofocus system. Um, there I definitely want to do some tests with the, the live view versus the DSLR system on this because I really am starting to have faith right now that Canon is going to develop a pro and mirrorless camera that is going to blow us away because the autofocus technology in, in viewfinder mode is great, but in live view is just astounding. A really interesting option here is going to be able to shoot with a new high efficiency image format. Uh, that is instead of JPEG or an alternative to JPEG, it's basically the same file size as a JPEG image, but it gives you 10-bit versus an 8-bit JPEG. Um, these formats do take quite a bit more computing power and it looks like the 1DX is struggling a bit as well because if you take a look at your shooting speeds in your RAW plus your high efficiency image format, the maximum burst rate is reduced quite a bit as well. So I might be a little biased here because I like video shooting, but the video specs on this camera are just insanely awesome. So we are talking about 5.5K RAW at 60 frames per second straight to the cards internally on this camera, which we can just sit on that for a second because other cameras are not doing this. There are some little holdbacks in the details, which we'll get to in a minute, but overall, this thing can shoot a ton of different frame rates and the possibilities are almost endless for this camera. So 60, 6K, 60 frames per second, you can shoot it in an uncropped and cropped. The only thing to keep in mind is if you are shooting 60 frames per second in 4K, or higher, you will not have autofocus in the full frame option. I know that's gonna be a disappointment to a lot of people, including myself. If you bump that into APS-C mode, the crop mode, you will get your autofocus back. Um, that's a big deal because Canon's autofocus is just so amazing at, I love shooting with it. So yes, if you're shooting 60 frames per second and 4K and above, you will have to bump into the crop mode for that video. However, you have 10 bit 422, 12 stops in C log in camera at any frame rate. I mean, this is class leading. You can shoot H.264, H.265, depending on the frame rates. You can output 4K at 60 frames per second over HDMI. This camera will oversample as well. So the actual video quality is going to be a big step up from before and we're not stuck with motion JPEG, which God, I hated that format in the 1DX2. It's basically the reason that I don't shoot video on that camera was because motion JPEG sucks so much. So this is a huge upgrade in virtually every area. Um, in camera 5.5K, just some specs for you and I'll bump some more on the screen here, but 2600 megabits per second or in 30p 1080, you do have um, the option of shooting at anywhere between 120 and 340 megabits per second. So really good choices in bit rates. You can shoot amazingly high quality if you do want to and much better than any other camera is delivering. 
Now the only kind of par for the course spec right here is gonna be in 1080, you can only shoot 120 frames per second. No worse than the competition right here, but uh, I know some cameras by Panasonic can shoot a little bit faster. And I was hoping that it might be able to shoot like 180 or higher. Also, for whatever reason, there's no audio if you're recording at 120 frames per second, and then no 24 frames per second at launch. Thankfully, it's coming via an upgrade really soon, but for whatever reason, that didn't get put into the initial firmware of this camera. Focus peaking is also built into this camera. There are no zebras though, which is kind of a disappointment. If you use a monitor, which I'm using right here, I have monitors on, uh, you will have zebras on the monitor. So it's kind of a good workaround, but nothing in the camera, which unfortunately I use zebras all the time. So I'm really disappointed at that one. A few rumors did talk about in-body image stabilization. Uh, that's not happening, but I didn't think it would happen. Until somebody proves me wrong, it is so far has not been possible to actually integrate in-body image stabilization with a mirror still in the camera. Now it does kind of make us hope for a mirrorless version of this camera and it also kind of gives a one up to the possibilities of mirrorless or possibly other camera systems that are mirrorless as well but I don't kind of count it against the 1DX Mark III, again, until somebody wants to invent some kind of a camera that does allow it to work, but it was in the rumors, so just keep that in mind. Now, the camera does have a electronic image stabilization. Again, in my experience with this on the EOS R, it's been kind of hit and miss. I usually turn it off. Um, maybe with all the extra processing power, it will be a little bit better in this camera, but for me, it's not anywhere like in-body image stabilization would be. Now you could stare at this camera all day long and think it's a 1DX Mark II because basically it looks the same on the outside and depending on who you ask, it's gonna be a really good thing or possibly a negative. And the reason I say that is because obviously this is gonna be built like a tank. The last version was and people loved it for that. Um, ergonomics are solid, but I know a lot of people that wouldn't complain if the camera was just a little bit smaller at least. Uh, also, it is about 90 grams lighter, which if you consider that the body is basically the same on there and all of this new tech is stuffed in there, that's actually pretty good. I mean, that's a fifth of a pound. So I think you will notice that over the course of an entire day. There are some new hardware features though. So we do have um, button illumination, which we first saw Nikon doing a couple of years ago. We do have a higher resolution screen, which honestly Canon has been making some of the best screens for a long time now. So higher resolution, even better. Uh, it's fully touch capable. And again, Canon has been integrating touch throughout their cameras and menu systems. So again, one of the best on the market right there. Um, also, there is a smart controller built into the AF button. We first saw this when they did that kind of pre-announcement announcement, announcement uh, back last year. And this is kind of what I thought it would be. So you can basically move your thumb across that and move your autofocus points around. It's supposed to be much faster than a joystick. However, you still have the joystick and you still have the ability to turn this off and on and then just leave it as still a normal AF on button. So I'm happy that Canon is trying new things on this. We'll see if I end up liking it and using it, but you can always turn it off. So no fault either way. Now we do have a ton of networking options on here that we did not have before, as well as GPS built into it. So much faster options on here. There's external add-ons as well that you can get. Uh, I'm not personally somebody who uses a lot of networking, but if you are, there's a lot here and I'll list some of it here um, because it's just something that I don't use as much. And then GPS included now is really nice to see as well. I know a lot of people will appreciate that one. So Canon has definitely stepped things up when it comes to speed and video, especially you combine that with the autofocus technology, both in live view and in the regular viewfinder DSLR mode. I think you have a really good camera right here. It's a solid upgrade. Um, you might have some issues with the choice of 20 megapixels, but I do think that Canon is starting to justify that with improved image quality and then being able to shoot a thousand pictures and basically never have to worry about a buffer. I think a lot of sports and even wildlife photographers would prefer that if that was the option that they had to choose from. Um, I do think that I wish that they had stepped it up just a little bit. 20 megapixels is just a little low in 2020, but that's what it is. And I do think we have a lot of solid features and build. And overall, this is a high-end camera that nothing else is coming close to right now. So let me know your thoughts on this camera. Again, I'm gonna get it in and give you my full thoughts on this thing. I might even use it as my number one video camera from now on because 
man, these video camera specs are amazing on here. So drop me a line down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like, sub if you haven't already. We give you a preview of this camera. And I'll see you guys soon in a new video coming up.